in the human intrusion we will be discussing about the biogeography of the early hominids. Biogeography of the early hominids which lived around uh, during the Miocene is very complex. We cannot uh, do much of the work in it because we cannot see much of the fossil record that was available at that time. So we can study the fossil record of other and more larger and more common mammal groups such as hyenids, which are hyenas and such as proboscidians associated with the hominids. So proboscidians are the uh, animals which which are having proboscis and proboscis jise hum urdu mein sond kehte hain these were the animals which were uh, just like the elephant as well as the mammoth the great mammoth so all of these uh, were related and they were living the same in the same niches in the same areas as the hominids so they share a common set of patterns involving the speciation in the Africa and in the early Miocene and expansion into Europe, Asia, North America during the middle Miocene followed by movement back into the Africa. So first they go out into Asia and Europe and then they come back and they follow the same, same pattern in the hominids as well as all the other animals that we have talked about. So it is very likely that hominids, uh, which include the ancestors of apes and humans, followed the same pat uh, similar changing patterns of distribution in the Miocene. We don't have their fossils, uh, we don't have their fossil record in those particular places, but we can only speculate that they followed the same trends as those mammoths, elephants and hyenas uh, as uh, the distribution patterns. So here you can see the scheme showing the possible interrelationship between the hominin. Uh, over the 7 million years and it is adapted from the wood and lunar gen. So here you can see that the early that are megadonts, uh, megadonts means they have the big teeth and archaic, there are the transitional uh, which are the homo habilis and then there is the pre-modern which is homo erectus, homo heidelbergensis and homo neanderthalis and then there is the homo sapiens. So this is the possible interrelationships and we have changed these into different categories of which we will be discussing about the early megadont, archaic, transitional, premodern and modern human being. So in this particular topic we will be uh, discussing up till the premodern. So early humanids in 2002, uh, Michael uh, Brunet and his fellow uh, researchers discovered six fossil bones, a cranium and some lower jaws that had hominin similarities. And they were assigned to a new genus of the human line of evolution or called uh, Sahilanthropus chardensis. So these uh, were the bones and they, they gave rise to an, uh, uh, an evidence of early hominins. And then there are the archaic hominins, the early finds in Tanzania and Ethiopia and dated around 4 million years ago. The Among the fossils of this age is the partial skeleton known as Lucy, which has supplied a great deal of anatomical information about the early hominins. We have talked about the Lucy in the paleontological part as well. And then there is the Megadont hominins, um, uh, a short-lived sideline hominin uh, evolution lived in East Africa 2.3 uh, to 1.4 million years ago. It is characterized by the heavy strong jaws and large molar teeth with a thick coating of enamel which gives it the name of megadont. Mega means bigger, don't means the teeth. So they were having a big teeth. So these, uh, this hominin was originally named Zinjathropus but uh, this is known as the Paranthropus. So then now there are the transitional hominins, the Homo habilis, a species that live around uh, nearly 2 million years ago. It is different from the Australopithecines uh, in having an upright posture and larger brain. So they were uh, having the upright posture, they were not walking on the two fe uh, four feet, instead they are walking two feet and they were having uh, upright posture and larger brains. Structure of its arm hand suggests that it was still quite adept at climbing and its ankle had the uh, astrolopithecian characteristics. That means they can, uh, uh, they can grasp things with their ankles as well. And then there are the postmodern, uh, pre-modern Homo, a new hominin, uh, Homo ergaster appeared around 1.9 million years ago, closely followed 
Homo erectus. Homo erectus left Africa about 1.7 million years ago and had spread into Eastern Asia by 100,000 uh, years later. And then there is the human Homo heidelbergensis which lived between 600,000 and 100,000 years ago. Now this Homo heidelbergensis has diverged uh, into two which is the Homo neanderthalis and Homo sapiens. The appearance of Homo neanderthalis and um, about 200,000 years ago with the evidence of Homo sapiens appearing later in 19 in 160 years old deposits in Ethiopia gives us some evidence about the divergence of the uh, earlier uh, genus. And then the Homo neanderthalis and Homo sapiens coexisted in Europe and Asia Minor and around 40,000 to 35,000 years ago. So, these uh, those, uh, these two species Homo neanderthalis and the Homo sapiens these are the examples of the pre-modern Homo. Homo.